Welcome to video 12 in a series of introductory videos for the SolidCam CNC programming software. This video's topic is full HSS. In video 11, we saw the HSS Express toolpath. So it's a basic version of HSS that is available in all the packages available from SolidCam. In this video, we'll talk about the full version of the HSS toolpath with all the options turned on and all the functionality. I'm going to do so on this part here. And we'll start with just this fillet on the corner here, and we'll take a look at what we saw in video 11. So in video 11, we took a look at how constant Z works, where it slices up that toolpath and along the surface there in slices in the Z direction. We saw how we could do the same sort of thing with linear. In this case, I have it in this direction going across that, that surface. Both those toolpaths would work, both would remove the material, but the finish would not look as clean as it could. Um, in both versions there, this toolpath either has too many movements or is maybe just too small of a movement. Maybe it's a waste of time to be zigzagging back and forth in that way. So with full HSS, we get an option where we can control the toolpath's direction along the surface using curves. So I'm just going to open up one toolpath here just to take a look at the expanded menu. So in HSS Express, we get these two. In full HSS, we get the rest of this menu here. And really what's going on here is we're still selecting the surface as our geometry, but we get the additional option to choose any curves we want to use to dictate the travel of the tool along those surfaces. So let's go through each one visually, and then we can go through the specifics of each one. So for that same curve there, I'm using morph between boundary curves, meaning that I've chosen the surface that I want to machine, and I've chosen as my curves a start edge curve that is on the top of those surfaces, a end edge curve at the bottom of those surfaces, and by telling it those two curves, I've told it that I'd like it to blend the toolpath as it goes across there. So basically following the curvature of the surface itself, and here we get a couple of passes that follow the surface exactly, and that will lead to a better finish. So carrying that idea forward, we'll take a look at other ways to use curves to dictate the travel of the tool. So in this case, this, this surface right here that we're trying to machine, I'm using perpendicular to curve, meaning that in this entire surface, I've told it to be perpendicular to this back line here. So as the toolpath travels across the surface, it's maintaining a perpendicularity with that curve. If I do the same surface, but parallel to that curve, we get a toolpath here that stays parallel to that line as it travels across that surface. The purpose here is you want to leave behind a good finish. You want to find the flow of the surface. So we find uh, curves on the surface that would help us to travel along there in a better way. Now, in this case, this surface right here, I probably would just do a pocket because it's completely flat. but the purpose here was to show that I can grab any curve and just get it to be parallel to it. Also with full HSS, we get the ability to add uh, additional features that would have added uh, some um, benefits to the constant Z toolpath. In this case, I'm doing a constant Z toolpath on this dish shape, but I'm assuming that I have not machined out this slot yet, so I still have material I have to finish here. And what I've done with this is I've added a spiral toolpath to it. So let's take a look at that real quick. It is still a constant Z. The surface is just that, that dish there. But with full HSS, I get the ability to set it to a cutting method spiral rather than the one way and zigzag we had previously. With that spiral, I've told it to constantly move down in the Z direction as it travels along that surface. And to connect those, those edges there, I'll go back to link links. And I've told it to blend the spline if there's a gap along the cut and link between slices. That gives me that continuous spiraling toolpath as it goes down there. Now, if you really wanted to do a true spiral, you could begin to use the projection toolpath. Projection, if we open that up. Unlike the other options where I tell it a surface and a curve I'd like to follow along that surface, or the two, the two curves on that one surface I'd like to blend between, projection is essentially just a default travel of, of the tool, a default toolpath that I'm projecting onto the surface that I've selected. So in this case with spiral, 
what I've done is I've told it I want it to do a spiraling toolpath, as you can see, a perfectly circular spiral, but project it onto those surfaces. In the spiraling toolpath, we have both spiral, radial, user-defined, and offset. So essentially, these are the same idea. If you chose a spiral, you tell it what the center of the spiral is. In this case, I have it set to auto detect the center of those surfaces, but you told it to start at a particular center point and a particular radius maximum and minimum, or in this case, start and end. So that is laying down a default spiral toolpath, but um, projected or draped on top of those 3D surfaces. With the other options, I would do the same thing with a radial stool, uh, toolpath. So in that case, it would be a star pattern or a spoke pattern that we would also still tell it a center point and a minimum maximum radius. But instead of spiraling out, it will zigzag in a spoke pattern and a star pattern. With offset, I would actually choose a contour that I want to follow. In this case, projection curve. And then we would offset inwards or outwards from that that, uh, that contour. User-defined would actually just project a sketch or a logo or some text onto the 3D surface. It is a way to do engraving. Additionally, if you do have that, uh, that, that toolpath that projects just on your surfaces, but you wanted it to be done in just a two-dimensional area, such as this circle, that same toolpath we were just looking at but now I've limited it to just that circular area. So it still has the same center point, but I've told it to do a spiraling pattern only inside that circle. So that's why if the center point was here, it's still doing just that spiraling toolpath there. So that handles um, limiting the travel of the toolpath even further. I like the toolpath I have, but I don't want it to do it on, on the entire surface. I just want it to do it right there. How you can use the morph between boundary curves is essentially on any corner rad. It's the best use there because now I have a nice flowing toolpath that just snakes back and forth across any kind of surface that I select. In this case, I have just this surface here that represents the fillet as it goes all the way around. And I have as my start and end curve, the top and the bottom of that selection of surfaces. That way I get a nice corner uh, edge, corner round edge around the entire part. Any questions on this or anything else from SolidCAD, you can always call us at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2. You can send us your parts or your ticket, uh, your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com. And stay tuned for the rest of the videos in this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.